I'm CJ with Elevated Systems, and today we're taking a look at the Hyundai Hibook 14. That's right, the South Korean automaker makes a lot more than cars, and when I saw this listing on Amazon, I had questions. Can a $150 Hyundai laptop be a viable option for someone in need of a reliable computer for work or school, but doesn't really have the budget for one? Can a $150 Windows laptop even be any good? And if not, can we make it good? That's what we're here to find out. Let's get into it. We'll start with the basic specs and features. The laptop comes with a 12 volt barrel jack charger and a user's manual. The laptop measures 330 millimeters by 217 millimeters by about 23 millimeters thick and weighs just under three pounds, so does fall into the ultra portable class. Starting at the top, the Highbook includes a two megapixel 720p webcam, a 14.1 inch IPS display with a resolution of 1366 by 768, giving it a pixel density of 111 PPI. There is a stereo microphone just above the 78 key membrane type keyboard, which includes a full function row and alternate system functions. There is a top hinge 96 by 64 millimeter trackpad. On the right side of the laptop is a USB 2 type A port, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and a micro SD card reader. On the left is the power input, a five gigabit type A port, and a micro HDMI output. There's also a full M.2 expansion slot allowing you to upgrade the storage with a SATA M.2 SSD. This whole laptop is driven by a 1.1 gigahertz Celeron N4020 dual core CPU. It has four gigabytes of LPDDR4 memory and a 128 gigabyte SSD. There's Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5, two watt stereo speakers, and it's all powered by a 37 watt hour lithium ion battery. Setting up the laptop was pretty straightforward, but it definitely took longer than usual to go through the Windows setup process. This slow start was just a preview of what was to come, but before we dive into that, let's talk about some of the strong points of the Highbook. First off, the build quality and materials are not going to be on par with something like a MacBook, but for the price point of just $150, it's not too shabby. The entire chassis is made of a rubberized plastic with a smooth, soft texture that's pretty fingerprint resistant. There's definitely some screen and chassis flex, and the bezel is only secured with four small screws under the rubber bumpers on the four corners, so it feels loose when you open the laptop. The screen has a good amount of wiggle, especially on an unstable surface, but there's no drift, and the hinges are strong enough to hold it in place in any position, but they're also too stiff for one-handed opening. There's a fair amount of keyboard deck flex, especially at the trackpad, but surprisingly, the keyboard's not that bad. There's a fair amount of actuation pressure needed at the top of the stroke, so you don't inadvertently actuate the keys while resting at home. The bottom is mushy, but there's a clear bottom out. Unfortunately, the keyboard does rattle, and the spacebar is very poorly stabilized, often failing to register a keystroke on the right outside of the key. Moving on to the trackpad, it's a bit small for a 14 inch laptop, but it gets the job done. It registers both clicks, taps, and multi gestures, but unlike the laptop body, it is a fingerprint magnet. The display, however, is one of the better parts of the laptop. It has a lower resolution of 1366 by 768, which is pretty common for lower end laptops and Chromebooks, but this one is an IPS panel, so it has really good color reproduction and viewing angles. It also has a good peak brightness and a pretty good anti-glare filter. So even sitting at my kitchen table with a large open picture window behind me, I could see the screen with no problems. The pixel density is still high enough that there isn't any screen door effect, and everything is sharp and clear. It's also a 16.9 aspect ratio, so most media complain full screen without any black bars. After using the laptop for about three weeks, I was able to make the appropriate adjustments to account for the lower resolution, and working in any office app or web page was not really a problem. Now, for the rest of the stuff, I can just say it, it works. This is what the built-in webcam and microphone look and sound like. Again, they work. You can see and hear me so they technically do what they're supposed to do and while the quality isn't great still having the capability at all is more than i expect from a 150 dollar laptop one other thing i did notice about the webcam is there's no indicator light letting you know it's on so i imagine most people will have it taped over when not in use 
I forgot to record some speaker audio, that'll make sense in a bit, but they sounded pretty much like you'd expect unsealed 2 watt laptop speakers to sound. Almost no lows or bass response at all, muddy mid-tones and clipped highs. And once you turn them up past about 80%, they start to rattle. Now, taken individually, none of these features or components are great, but taken as a whole package, it adds up to a pretty good deal at 150 bucks. Now let's talk about the bad. The decision to sell this laptop with a full version of Windows 10 Pro installed as the operating system. Technically, the laptop meets the minimum requirements for Windows 10, but just. Consider a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B is more powerful than this laptop, and while it's possible to run Windows on an RPi, it's not a great experience, and it's not that great of an experience on the HiBook either. Before I even started doing anything, just the operating system's background processes we're keeping the CPU usage at or near 100%. Windows 10 is a bulky and system demanding operating system, and it basically sucks up most of the system resources of this laptop. As a result, everything from simply bringing up the start menu to Wi-Fi speeds is affected, and the computer feels extremely sluggish. I was able to install some Microsoft Office programs, but working on them was painfully slow. I mean, for the first time in a long time, I was actually typing faster than the computer could display the characters. Charts and graphs in Excel took several minutes to populate, and working in web apps wasn't much better. I had to constantly kill Windows processes to speed up the work I was trying to do. Now, don't get me wrong, it's still possible to get work done on this laptop, but if you want to speed up the computer, you might have to consider disabling or uninstalling some of the Windows processes. Now, I don't usually recommend this, but turning off real-time virus and malware protection will free up a lot of system resources. Windows Defender, or any antivirus software, is one of the biggest resource hogs out there. There are some good Windows debloat tools out there, like some simple scripts you can run, but I went a different way and got rid of Windows altogether and replaced it with a much lighter operating system. By the way, this same exact laptop is also available with Windows 10 Home S mode installed, which is a slimmed down version of Windows that's pretty much like Chrome OS. You can only install apps from the Microsoft App Store and Edge is the only browser you can use. It's more restrictive, but it is faster for low end hardware like this. I've never personally used it and the general consensus is split from people who say it's unusable to those who swear by it for lower end laptops. So that's an option, but for me, I went with a much lighter operating system. There are several free open source, easy to use Linux operating systems that should be perfect for this type of hardware. And I decided to give Zorin OS Lite a spin. And let me tell you, it was a game changer. Once it started up, I immediately noticed the difference. The OS was barely touching my resources and everything was super snappy and responsive. Plus, the default desktop environment is pretty Windows-like. Zorin OS Lite comes with a solid selection of pre-installed apps, including LibreOffice, a free and open equivalent to Microsoft Office that's fully compatible with Office files. And while this laptop doesn't meet minimum specs for programs like Adobe Photoshop, the open source alternative GIMP runs fine. There's even a remote desktop client. Now, Zorin OS Lite isn't a perfect solution. For one, there's a learning curve for those coming from Windows, and Linux doesn't always play nice with every part of the computer it's installed on. For example, after installing Zorin OS, neither the Wi-Fi nor speakers worked. I was able to fix the Wi-Fi by installing the drivers and rebooting, but the speakers were another story. In fact, the built-in speakers, microphone, and headphone jack are all non-operational, and that's a significant problem, especially since audio isn't a trivial feature. Bluetooth works fine, so you can pair some AirPods or something, but not everyone has these. I used a little USB adapter for my wired headphones with mic, which cost me about five or 10 bucks, it's a compromise, but it does give you better sound quality than the built-in speakers and mic. And that's probably the biggest takeaway here. When you're dealing with laptops in this price range, they're going to be compromises. It's not gonna be the perfect machine that can do everything you want it to do flawlessly, but that doesn't mean it's a worthless product. In fact, the Hyundai HiBook 14 
is an excellent value when you consider the hardware that's packaged in here. I mean, if you were to add up the cost of all the components individually, you'd definitely be looking at a price tag that's much higher than the $150 that this thing is going for. Now, there is one big problem with the laptop and that's the heavy operating system that's been installed on it. But here's the thing, that's probably the reason why this laptop only cost $150. Microsoft likely subsidized it in order to get their OS installed on as many devices as possible, which is pretty common practice. Both Microsoft and Google will pay manufacturers to install their operating systems on their devices. And the reason they do that is not because they're trying to make money off the OS licenses. No, they're actually more interested in collecting your metadata and analytics so they can target you with ads or sell that data to companies who will do the same. Now. I'm not here to take sides in that debate. I'll leave that up to you guys to hash out in the comments. But what I will say is this, you can take advantage of the fact that Microsoft has essentially given you a huge discount on this laptop and then just install your own operating system on it. So while there may be some compromises with this device, it's still a great value. And with a little bit of tinkering, you can make it work for your needs. Let me also answer the biggest question asked on Amazon about this laptop. No, it's not for gaming. The Celeron's integrated GPU can barely drive the Windows Display Manager. It can't drive 3D games. For anything more intensive than Solitaire or Candy Crush, you really need to look elsewhere. So to quickly reiterate my thoughts on the Hyundai HiBook 14, it's safe to say that in terms of hardware, this is definitely a solid value proposition at its price point. As they say, there are no bad products, only bad price points. And this device proves that point. It may have some shortcomings, but for $150, it ticks all the boxes that a laptop should. However, I do have some reservations about its longevity, not sure how long it'll hold up even under moderate use. And unlike my 94 Hyundai Accent, this only came with a one year limited warranty. Now, when it comes to software, that's where things start to fall apart. This hardware was clearly designed for Chrome OS or Windows S and isn't really suited for a full fledged Windows Pro install. So if you're not comfortable with deep loading windows, which could leave you vulnerable to security threats or don't like the restrictions that come with S mode, which you're probably not, or you probably looking at Chromebooks or you're not willing to try an operating system like Zorin OS, then this probably isn't the best choice for you. That being said, if you're on a tight budget and need a computer and you're willing to give Linux a shot, the Hyundai HiBook 14 is the most affordable option I've seen. There are plenty of other laptops with practically the same exact specs and hardware, but if you're looking for something that won't break the bank, this may be worth the consideration. Now, if you wanna know what really niche use case I bought this cheap laptop for, let me know in the comments and maybe I'll make a video on it. Or if you have any questions, just ask. While you're there, be sure to click that like and consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.